If you like my videos and want to support me, please consider doing so on Patreon. Also, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about one of my all-time favorite driving games. This is the game that taught a prepubescent 13-year-old Patman QC how to drive. This is the number one arcade game of 1986. That game in question is Outrun. What's the connection between this game and arcade racing giant Namco? What Hollywood movie influenced the design of this game? So put on your racing gloves and grab that gear shift because this is the history of Outrun. The year is 1985. Sega designer Yu Suzuki is looking to leap from two wheels to four wheels. Having noticed the enormous success that Namco was having with its arcade games, Pole Position 1 and 2, he wanted to create something that would overtake them as the king of the arcade racer. Mr. Suzuki started with the company in 1983, and his first game was championship boxing for the SG-1000. The executives at Sega were so impressed that they decided to release the game as is into the arcades. He followed this up with the motorcycle racing game Hang On. This was another huge hit for Sega, and it came in either stand-up or sit-down cabinets. The sit-down simulated you being on an actual motorcycle and using your body weight to lean left and right while you steer with the handlebars. He followed that game up the same year with another huge hit, Space Harrier. Growing up, Mr. Suzuki was always a fan of fast cars and possibly fast women. He had found inspiration in a 1981 Hollywood movie. No, I'm not talking about On Golden Blonde. I'm talking about Cannonball Run. This was a comedy featuring a lot of Hollywood stars such as Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise, Roger Moore, and the ever vivacious Farrah Fawcett, which this YouTuber had a poster of on his wall. It was a movie about a nationwide race that featured a lot of stars and a lot of cars. Mr. Suzuki wanted to create a game that allowed you to select different characters and cars. He wanted the game to be set in America, just like the movie that had inspired him. He asked his boss at Sega to send him overseas to take pictures and scout locations for the game. His boss said no because it was too dangerous in America. He opted to go to Europe instead, which he eventually preferred because of the distinct style of scenery. After development started, he soon realized that there would only be one car to choose and only one driver to pick. His car of choice was a Ferrari Testarossa. He found a private owner in Europe that allowed him to drive the car on a private course. He and his colleagues took numerous photographs and also recorded the engine sounds to be implemented into the game. The game came in six distinct cabinets. The first one is the deluxe sit-down version in which the cabinet uses a hydraulic system to move the car left and right. It also utilized a 25-inch monitor. The steering wheel uses force feedback to let you know when you're going off the road or about to crash. There was also a standard sit-down cabinet which did not move along with a 20-inch monitor. There were two stand-up units, one with upgraded plastics, a mini, and two cockpit variations which did not move. One of the first things you notice when you start up the game is the ability to choose what type of music you listen to. The excellent music was designed by Hiroshi Kawaguchi. The large detailed sprites and silky smooth scaling is what drew a lot of people in. The game runs on a modified version of the Sega Hang-On hardware with an emphasis on better graphics. The game is a point-to-point -point racer in which you have to beat the clock. Mr. Suzuki would always refer to this as a driving game and not a racing game because you're trying to beat the clock and not race against anybody else. The controls are pretty simple with an accelerator and a brake. There is also a gear shift with low and high to help you get to that 180 mile per hour maximum speed. The hills will crest and dip making it much more difficult thanks to the System 16 hardware. After successfully completing each section, the road will split and you will get to choose which way to go. There are five possible destinations, all of which include an advance in difficulty. Be careful going around those corners because if you take it too sharply, you might flip the car over and you and your girlfriend will be ejected. There are also five different endings to discover. The game has a great sense of immersion thanks to the super scalar technology. I still get the warm fuzzies playing it 30 years later. The car you're driving is clearly based on the Ferrari Testarossa, which Mr. Suzuki loves so much. However, they did not get an official license for Ferrari, which led to many legal battles over the years. Upon its release, it shot to the top of the arcade sales charts and became the number one arcade game of 1986. The top software developer in the world, U.S. Gold. <laughs> Sorry, 
I tried saying that with a straight face, but it just wasn't happening. They gained the rights to release the game. The game had to be put out by Christmas of 87, so some of these ports are rather poor, but in U.S. Goal of Defense, the game shifted 250,000 copies, and that's just counting the 8-bit versions. The game was released on a multitude of home computer platforms, but Sega was the first to release it for the Master System. The game was released less than 12 months after the arcade game debut. This was a pretty good conversion considering its 8-bit roots. The graphics were a bit tiny, but it does resemble OutRun. It also made use of the Yamaha YM2413 FM sound unit, which made it sound a whole lot more like the arcade game. There was also a 3D version released which utilized the Sega Scope classes. Starting off the 8-bit computer parade is the Amstrad version. This version along with the Spectrum and Commodore 64 port included a cassette tape with the OutRun arcade tunes on it. And still shots, it looks pretty good with nice large colorful sprites. However, as soon as it starts to move, it all falls apart. The last time I saw something this slow was when I saw my 95-year-old great-grandma trying to go to the bathroom. The only in-game sound is the grating screech when you go around the corner. And I mean that literally. I guess this is why they included the cassette tape. To be fair, the intro tune on the menu is pretty good. Next up is the MSX version. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this version is not bad. Not only do you get in-game music while you play, but it also sounds reasonably well. The speed is not quite as fast as the arcade game, but everything moves along at a reasonable pace. The graphics are large and detailed. The game does start to slow down when it gets fast and furious. The playability is not too bad. The Spectrum board is up next and it's a decent attempt. The sprites are large and detailed, but the speed is just average. The scrolling is also way too choppy. Not as bad as the Amstrad version, but also not very good. There is in-game music which you absolutely have to have when you're playing OutRun. The playability is on par with the MSX, which means it's not too bad. The MS-DOS version is a very good attempt, probably because it was coded by unlimited software. Yes, the sprites have been reduced in size, but a lot of the arcade features have been included. Most notably, the hand on the radio at the start of the game allowing you to select which tune you like. Don't get too excited folks, it's only the PC speaker, but at least it's something while you're playing. The speed of the game is very good and so is the scrolling. The roadside is filled with many different objects and the hills dip and crest just like in the arcade. Aside from the music, this could be the best 16-bit home computer version available. The good old Commodore 64 port is not very good. Featuring two different colors of gray to simulate the road and nice white clouds in the background. Everything looks flat, as flat as my first girlfriend. The colors are very drab and dreary, but at least the game is fast. Playability is average at best. The game was released on cassette only in Europe, and the load time between levels was around 5 minutes. There were no branching paths either. There was a US version released which fixed a couple of bugs, but was also released on diskette, which made the load times a bit better. People have said the game runs faster, but I just couldn't see it. The MSX2 version is up next. It was released only in Japan, but it did feature better graphics and speed. Background scenery is sparse at best. Released on both cartridge and diskette, making the load times reasonable. Playability is pretty good. The Game Gear version is up next. Looking at playing very similar to his big brother counterpart, the Master System. The game is a decent port of the arcade game. Scenery graphics are very limited, but it plays pretty good. The Atari ST port is up next, and goodness gracious, what the heck happened? The speed of the game is okay, but it's way too choppy to make it any fun to play. If you are judging this based on it being a standalone racer, it would get a big thumbs down. Since it's a conversion of OutRun, this gets two thumbs down. The music is decent though, and the playability is average. The Amiga version looks almost identical to the Atari ST. It looks as though the Atari ST version is a bit smoother and faster. Audio-wise, the Amiga version takes the cake with better music and sound effects. Playability is a bit easier on the Atari ST. Kicking off the 16-bit console ports to the Sega Genesis version. While not as good as the arcade game, it's very close. The sprites are large and varied along with smooth scrolling and fast gameplay. The music is also really good and it includes a fourth audio track. 
the only version to include it. Playability is very good. The PC Engine version was developed by NEC and is very good. Not quite as good as the Sega Genesis version, but it's way up there. The sprites are large and detailed and the scrolling is smooth and fast. The audio is pretty good and the playability is top notch. In 1996, OutRun was released for the Sega Saturn in Japan and Europe. This is the definitive home version of the game and I would say it's arcade perfect. But what sets it apart from later versions is the hidden 60 frames per second mode which is essentially double of the arcade game. When the game was released in Europe, it was included in a 3-pack along with Afterburner 2 and Space Harrier. The hidden 60 frames per second mode was removed in this version. The game was not released in North America. 2002 brought us the release of Yu Suzuki Gameworks Volume 1 for the Dreamcast. This was a compilation of Mr. Suzuki's works and the games included were Afterburner 2, Hang On, Outrun, Power Drift, and Space Harrier. These are essentially arcade perfect games but it was released only in Japan. Speaking of the Dreamcast, Outrun was a mini game included in the title Shinmu. In 2003, Sega Arcade Gallery was released for the Game Boy Advance. This was a compilation of four arcade games including Afterburner, Space Harrier, Super Hang On, and Outrun. If you ever wanted a near arcade perfect version of Outrun to play on the go, this was the compilation for you. Every game is worth a look, so check it out. In 2004, the Sega Ages line was released for the PS2 in Japan. For those of you who don't know, the Ages line were remakes of classic Sega games but with better graphics and a lower price point. A lot of these are not very good, especially Space Harrier, but Outrun turned out pretty well. A lot of people gave it flack back in the day, but I thought it was well done. The graphics are nice and smooth with large detailed objects and smooth fast gameplay. There were other sequels and spin-offs, but I want to make sure I give each game its due rather than rush right through it. So stay tuned and I will eventually cover all of the other OutRun games. This is without a doubt my absolute favorite arcade driving game. There is nothing like listening to Magical Sound Shower as you race along to hit the checkpoint while taking in the silky smooth pixel graphics. If you ever have a chance to play this in the arcades, Especially the sit-down moving unit, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It's the only way it can grow. Thanks for watching.